Okay, hi everyone, it's Mike Heydrich. I'm going to show you how to install a RS-45 serial interface port into a Hypertherm PowerMax 65 plasma cutter uh, to give you the serial communications link uh, for folks that are doing some automatic uh, torch height control on a plasma CNC that they want to interface with or for other reasons. So this is the kit uh, that you get from Hypertherm. Uh, consists of three cables, um, four screws, two smaller ones, two a little larger, um, a keep nut and the serial interface card and um, a little port that plugs into the uh, larger cable. Um, looking at the instructions, you're going to need um, a T20, a T15, and a T10 Torx bit, um, and then a Phillips screwdriver uh, should be the... Uh, tools that you'll need so these are all the parts okay I'll back up and show you um, this is the Pyramax 65 plasma cutter that I'm going to use in my CNC plasma machine so the first step is to remove the cover um, there are uh, seven screws on each side and then two on the top um, so that's eight screws of one size and then eight screws of another size that you need to remove in order to get the uh, cover off. So um, I'm going to remove that cover now. Okay, I've removed all 16 screws. Eight of them use the Torx T20 and then eight of them use the Torx T15. So now we should be able to remove the cover and see the component barrier uh, that's underneath the cover. Okay, now you can see the component barrier that uh, keeps everything protected um, around the power cord and everything. Um, that component barrier uh, can be removed from the machine. So I'm going to do that now. It's important to note that uh, obviously you should be doing all this with the machine unplugged and uh, nowhere near any power. Also make sure that you're grounded and uh, all of your uh, components are protected. So now you can see the inside of the machine with that component barrier removed. It's a little hard to see uh, with the camera, the way the lighting is in here. But right here and right here are going to be the two mounting holes we're going to use uh, to mount the card. But before we do that, the instructions are, tell us to uh, prepare the uh, machine so that we can actually mount uh, the port on the front of the machine. So I'm going to spin this around. Right here above the air inlet, we have a screw, and you can't very well make it out because it's all black, but there's a perforated line right here where this plate's going to be removed. This screw is a, is a Torx T15 that you need to remove. Once you do that, you can get in here and, and move this plate. I'm going to grab a knife um, just to make it a little easier. And we'll see that this little cover is like a little sticker type cover here. And we'll just pry this up a little bit. You want to do this kind of gently because the idea is not to scratch your machine all the way up. But when you pry that up and you put some pressure on the left hand side, you can kind of uh, uh, bend this on the perforation that Hypertherm's giving you in this sticker like cover. Once you have that, you can kind of hold your finger on the left hand side, 
bend it a few times just to kind of make it a little perforated back and forth and then it will break right off. I'll just score it a little better with the knife. There we go. Once you have it started, it gets a little easier. There we go. So now that opens up the hole where we'll mount the serial port. Next step is to reinstall that screw. Just like that. Again, that's T15 Torx bit. Okay, now I'm gonna spin the machine back around so that we can install the serial card in its mounting location where I showed you before. The screws that mount that card are and actually all the screws that came with the uh, serial card are, are Torx T10. And this card mounts with the larger two screws that come in the set. So I'll get this one started here. in place a little bit. They give you a torque spec, like uh, instructions say mount it uh, to 10 inch mounts. That's what you're supposed to do if you're gonna break out your torch wrench. Me, I'm just gonna snug it up here. You don't want to break anything. It's not like it's a um, gonna get jostled around. But you just want it nice and snug so you don't crack your circuit board. But you don't want it loose. Okay. Now we got to spin the machine around again because the next step is to actually uh, secure the uh, grounding strap to a ring terminal, so I'm gonna spin the machine around and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, I've spun the machine around and right here is a grounding screw that's built into the machine that we're gonna attach this uh, grounding wire that comes with the, um, with the kit. We're gonna attach that ring terminal to that screw um, so we switch back to the Torx T15 bit um, and I'll attach that that ring terminal there and I want to mount it so that um, the ring terminal is in the horizontal the wire is basically uh, in the horizontal position um, there's three access holes one two and three and this lower right hand corner uh, hole is where we're going to be feeding the wire so we're going to run the wire up here and, and feed it through that hole. Um, I'll get this done and then I'll show you how that looks. Okay, you can see the uh, ring terminal I have it mounted here on this screw and I've got the, the green and yellow wire is running fairly horizontally. And right here where these two gray cables are going through is a, is a hole, an access hole uh, that will get us to the other side of the machine. So that's where we're going to now feed uh, the spade terminal through so that we can gain access to that wire on the other side. And you just, it's perforated, so you just kind of feed it right through there. You kind of route it. Okay, now I'm gonna spin the machine around back to the other side where we mounted the serial card 
um, and we'll be able to uh, begin to hook that wire up. So, hold on one second. Okay, I've spun the machine around and we can again see the serial card that I have mounted here. Um, on the left hand side, there's a black six pin connector and just below that is a little spade terminal so that we can then take the wire that we just routed, which is right here, that I fished through that hole. Um, we can now plug this grounding wire into that lower spade uh, that's on that serial card. So I'll get that done for us. Okay, you can now see where I have that uh, grounding spade mounted right here, this little pink connector that's on the bottom of that card. Um, the next step is going to be to begin uh, the other two wires that we're going to mount. So We're going to start with the longer cable and the way this is going to mount is that we're going to push the connector through the hole that we made when we re removed the cover and then we're going to follow the two gray cables here all the way through the machine and then back through that access hole that we used earlier over here uh, that we also ran the grounding wire through. We'll push the connector through there and then we'll go on the other side of the uh, machine again to where the serial card is and we'll connect that uh, cable to the J1 port uh, that's on that serial card. So I'll get that cable installed. Again, I'm gonna push it through the access hole in the front, follow these gray cables and run it through the um, uh, hole that runs through the machine front or side to side and then connect it to the other side of the uh, on the serial cable in port J1. Before I get that mounted, here's the cable again that we're gonna install. And when this uh, port gets installed uh, on the outside of the machine, it's going to mount with the red cable facing up. Uh, so that's the way I'll orient the port uh, through the machine access hole. And then, like I said, I'll begin to trace those cables, uh, follow along the same path, and uh, uh, get that connector here. This is what will push through the port hole uh, from the right side to the left. Okay, real quick, I just want to show you, I've got this cable mounted through that hole. I'll orient it so that the red wire will be facing up. Um, and then as we go over here to the side, uh, we can see where I ran the cable here all the way up and I actually passed it through the hole that was on top. Um, over here on the upper side, it was a little larger hole because uh, I had to get this connector through the perforated holes. So then now it's going from the right side of the machine over to the left, which is where the serial card is. Uh, so my next step is to uh, mount that front port uh, using the two smaller T Torx T10 screws that came with the hypertherm kit. Um, turn the machine around and then connect that port, uh, that cable connection to J1 on the serial card. After looking at it a little more, um, I decided to route that cable through the lower right uh, bushing from the side of the machine instead of the upper right, um, really because I believe that uh, upper right bushing has a wire that goes down to power and I wanted to keep that uh, serial cable away from the power as much as possible. Um, the nice thing is that the bushings that are in there um, are just press fit into the actual case. So I pushed it back and they're split. So then it was easy just to drop the wire down into that split, route it through the hole and then replace the bushing. Um, uh, so that it was easier to actually mount it rather than try to put the actual hole connector through the piece. So I'd recommend following the instructions like it says and lower and mounting it in the lower right hand section. So I wanted to give an update real quick before I move on. Okay, here we can see that I've got the uh, serial port mounted to the actual machine using again those two screws that came with the serial kit. Uh, those are mounted with a Torx T10 bit. Um, and then also that cable that I routed, this 
so I can get up high enough here. Here's now the connector that I routed through. Again, uh, with the update, I went to the lower right hand hole. That's what the instructions also said to do. Uh, routed that cable up and mounted it now to the serial card, um, again, that we have installed right here. So the next step would be to install the shorter cable, which is the last of the three cables. Um, it looks to be a five pin connection uh, to a four pin connection, no, five to five. So it's gonna connect from the serial card here in J2 to the CM port here on the hypertherm. So I'll get that, cut, that cable over here and mounted. Um, and then I'll show you how that's how that looks The cable that we're about to mount has two different ends on it look really similar um, But you'll notice that the strain relief on one end is longer and this is the connection that will go to the serial card here on J2 so again look for the longer strain relief section you'll know which end that needs to go to the serial card then this kit this cable will get uh bent back in half and then come back here and mount to the cm port on the actual hypertherm okay here's a shot of that cable now installed again the longer strain relief mounting to the actual serial card on j2 and then this cable comes back and amounts to where it says CM on the hypertherm, which is actually J7, uh, is the connector right there. So that's how that cable gets mounted. Um, the next step is to uh, reinstall the uh, cover there, the little protector cover. Okay, the component barrier is reinstalled back on the machine. And while I was at it, I went ahead and installed a zip tie right here um, on this gray cable uh, to kind of tie it up out of the way um, and to keep it away from the, the other wires. They had an original zip tie that had them all bundled together. Um, so I went ahead and installed that zip tie on there just to kind of keep that uh, tidy in there just like they originally had it. So the next step is to reinstall the case cover um, there was a nut that came in the kit, uh, nowhere in the instructions was that clamping nut used. I imagine it was originally for installing that uh, um, eyelet on the grounding wire, uh, but since they used a grounding screw, uh, it's probably no longer needed, so I'm sure they just overlooked that in the kit. So, But nowhere in the instructions did it require that little nut. So again, I will reinstall the... 16 total screws and install the case cover um, Eight of those are T20 and eight of them are, are T15 Torx uh, So we'll get those um, On the on the case itself. We've got uh, three uh, Screws at the bottom here Three at the bottom on the other side is six seven and eight. Those are the T20 screws and then on the sides the middle and at the top here and here and here and here for those on each side those are the Torx T15 screws uh, that the case uh, gets put back on with so I'll get those installed okay got the cover back on the hypertherm and we've completed all of the steps uh, to install the RS45 serial communications card into a hypertherm Pyramac 65. Um, again, that part number was 228539 is the part number uh, that you need for that 485 serial communications kit for the Pyramac 65 and 85. So, Smikey Mike Space. Uh,